Vine Street, excuse the man, I'm at Peter's Garage. So, as I say, once again, believe it or not, this uh, on how to restore your Camaro. So, uh, we're very fortunate we're able to get up here to us. Um, but there are a whole series of different challenges uh, uh, here because this is the first time we've we've done a um, uh, live with uh, uh, two of us being in the one spot. So let's just head over here to Peter and see how he is. So, Peter, uh, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, you seem to be mute. Can you unmute? Hello, no, no. no, you're still muted. Hello, test. I've got the mic on. H5. Test. Test. So we'd appreciate if uh, somebody out there would uh, let us know. Hello. Hello, test, test. Okay, I'm going to... Well, uh, it says we're live. I'm just going to switch over uh, to YouTube and see. Yeah, there we are. We're on YouTube. Well, uh, it says we're live. I'm just going to switch over uh, to YouTube and see. Yeah, there we are. We're on YouTube. Well, uh, it says we're live. I'm just going to switch over. Uh, anyway, so we're definitely live. They've got audio and we're uh, we're on. So... If you didn't get the first part, well, welcome to Peter's Garage. I'm Charlie, and uh, this is all coming to you uh, from Vine Street Studios. Uh, as I said, please forgive us for the long hair, just a couple of old hippies. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, another first for us trying to do a complete live show here from Peter's Garage. So, Peter, how, how are things? Pretty good, Charlie. Yeah, it uh, looks like we got some kind of echo. You got an echo? Yeah, I turned my mic on. Uh, okay, maybe just turn it off and we'll try and go through this one. How's that, Charlie? Well, let, let's just assume that uh, we're getting picked up here um, on my microphone uh, and with the echo in here, it might help a little bit. So, uh, Peter, I understand you've got something new to convey to us and, and to, to our followers, the thousands of followers out there that, that are clambering every week to get in and, and subscribe to our channel. And, I, you know, I can't even speak about the uh, number of people that are trying to back us, you know, and send us stuff. Uh, I just the, the response has been overwhelming. But, Peter, you've got big news for us. Yeah, Charlie, actually... Um... It looks like I purchased another car. Uh, we won't talk about it a little bit now, but uh, hopefully it, uh, if the deal goes through, it should be here in about three, four weeks, which is I'm excited about it because maybe we can actually uh, go through the process of actually taking some things apart and looking at, uh, at, at the purchase and, and what it's going to need to get it back to, to the original state of it. Uh, but I'm so excited. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I have right now is, is, is already built or pretty much at the, in the middle stages where – you know, it, it's hard for me to sit there and start going through things and, and putting things together when a lot of it's done already. Yeah, th and that's exciting because, uh, you know, to, like how many people have seen a car taken apart piece by piece, recorded, catalogued, set aside to get the various uh, types of work performed on it, and then gradually bringing it back and putting it back together again. That's a whole different experience. 
Yeah, and I'm, that's what I'm excited about because you know obviously we've seen uh, one of my cars and and the build I'm doing right now with the with the '69 Camaro. So this uh, this other project, it's not going to be a complete frame off restoration, but we'll be taking things apart and looking and documenting different things on uh, on a on a different type of car. And I kind of stepped outside the box. I'm usually a first generation Camaro guy, but uh, you know I've always uh, I've always liked some other Chevy uh, brands or, or models and. I'm all excited. I'm excited about it. Yeah, and I'm excited too because it extends my career. <laughs> so, you know, like talking about this kind of stuff, um, some of you may or, or may not have seen uh, this setup here, Peter Scott, the transmission and the engine uh, sitting there on this rig that he designed and built specifically for this purpose. And we're going to try and explore a bit about that so that we can it will all begin to make sense uh, to those that are watching that may not have uh, gone through this process before. Uh, you know, I should really have a cameraman to do all this stuff. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing all this myself, Peter. Because uh, our, we have a tight, we're working on a tight budget. Tight sure. budget, yeah, yeah, very tight. Yeah, and I apologize, guys. I, we, the Charlie and I are, are exploring all different uh, options here and, and trying to keep everybody engaged and, and hopefully we can continue with providing a lot of information on these cars and and, and and at least it'll be beneficial for somebody out there to say hey you know what you, you you saved me on this or you made me find out this or i finally knew where i had to look for something or whether to look at a car and i and i noticed that the number was correct and anything that can any information i can provide that can help you in the, either the build or the, or the purchasing of a, of a, of a, of a car uh, that's that's our goal here with Charlie. Yeah, exactly. And um, oh, it, it's good to see that uh, uh, Kristen McGowan. I wonder if she's related. Oh wow! Uh, she says she can hear us. Uh, that's terrific news, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. Really appreciate taking the time uh, to sign on and uh, demonstrate and show your support uh, for this adventure of ours. Uh, and as I said earlier. This is the fifth episode, and you know I was reading a bit about uh, people who do or start out. They want to be a blogger or do a podcast, and they talk about it and talk about it and talk about it, and then they'll do one, and then they'll give up in frustration. But we're not like that. No, and I got my hats off to Charlie because he uh, he comes in and helps me do this, and you know, I mean I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not, uh, but unlike myself, like with Charlie there, he kind of brings the best out of me, and uh, at least he gets uh, me engaged and, and and provides some information for you guys. Yeah, uh, and it, it's too bad about the uh, the mass, but you know we're doing the right thing, and you know we keep saying to people, be safe, do the right thing, don't take any chances. You know we're nearly there. Uh, normally, I, I don't have hair this long. Oh my god, I can't I can't remember the last time. No, I'm, I had hair like this. Yeah. The mask for me, it's okay because I didn't shave today. So that kind oh, of okay. It hides a lot then, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, I was looking through uh, the last few videos, uh, blog spots that we did. And, you know, we're really stepping it up every week, you know, with content and visuals and try to add a little bit of excitement and jocularity, as they would say. And also, uh, you know, being able to come here and, and film the car. And, and the thing is that uh, if people don't realize, uh, you know, last week I'd come up, filmed the car, then went back to my place and furiously worked at it so that I could get the right size, this mysterious 200 megabyte. And I'd never heard of this before, but, you know, it, it's a gateway. You You can't get through that gateway if the file is bigger than 200 megabytes. So really, what is 200 megabytes? Well, you'll never know until you go through the process and edit it and check the, the, the size of it and then edit again what to cut out, what to leave in. So that was pretty stressful last week, but I think it, it turned out really cool. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, the cars here just came back the day before and, yeah, looks great. So, um, 
you know, we're we're going to at some point uh, when the new car comes, we'll we'll talk about the process. You know, what's the, all the various steps, and we'll document that and come up with a a format to present it. So that's that's something for everybody to look forward to. Um, so for today, uh, we're, we're going to look, reflect back on last week uh, where we identified uh, the tags and where you could find them and, and, and we showed the numbers, even the numbers on, on the glass, uh, specific numbers and you told us that you got some of these specially made for the car. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a, a, a there's a, a, a virtual cornucopia of information. I love saying that. That that sounds really great. Cornucopia of information. Me yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a it's not a an ice cream cornet, as I would say. Um, anyway, so uh, this week I guess we're going to expand a little bit on the numbering and how to make sense of it and where you'll find it, additional information. So Peter, why don't you just fill us in a little bit on that topic? Sure, thanks, Charlie. So uh, over the last couple of episodes, I know we've talked a lot about trim tags and the location of it, different options uh, on the body side. Um, and I hope that was a lot of good information for everybody out there. Uh, regarding the you know where to find the trim tag, the VIN number, breaking it down, the trim tag, different options that are that are available on the car. I think now with, in, in this next episode or a couple episodes, I'd like to kind of walk you through the documentation of for, for, you know, the, the powertrain uh, and some of the components related to the powertrain and uh, where you find that that data and, and how to break it down uh, so you can actually ensure that if you're looking for that potentially numbers matching car or and the components on the car, you know, you at least have a better idea of where to find it. Yeah, and uh, as I as I'd said to you, uh, get back in here, um, as I'd said to you, uh, you know, there's a variety of people out there doing this type of stuff, and it's all very educational. Um, however, there's not many of them uh, who go this deep into uh, the tagging uh, and maybe because they might not have access to that type of information or that wealth of knowledge uh, but for the individual who likes the car and uh, wants to be a little bit more educated on it uh, you know our series of uh, podcasts uh, will certainly provide that foundation for for them to go forward. And once they find a car, they can check it out and determine if it's the one that they want to ha take on and what the level of uh, effort and labour and parts and finance, it's, if it's going to be the car for them. Yeah, and I think I think this, uh, you know, hopefully what we'll do, Charlie, we take the camera and just show the different areas on, on where to find uh, the, the numbers. We'll try that. It might be a little bit uh, a little bit uh, shaky or maybe not clear, and you know, or but at least what we're doing is we're we're testing it. Also, at least let us give us some feedback on if it's working, if it's if it's uh, uh, not clear, or you know, I mean, it's just more so. The more information we get from our our our, um, our followers is you know it, it it makes us better, right? Yeah, that's for sure. And you know, I'm just thinking. I still have that little video from last week. I think I'll show it. Okay. And uh, it just as a reminder for people. So that was all about timing, just the train there. Uh, you 
then. Okay, I see you've got, see you've got uh, West Coast Customs, West Coast Customs up, there, up there on your wall. On your wall. Uh, I know you've yeah, been, there, know a you've been there a couple of times. Okay, so... Um, yeah, West Coast Customs. Uh, West Coast Customs, uh, great place. We spoke about that. And uh, I, I hope they appreciated uh, the plug that we gave them. Um, be certainly mention it to Ryan next time we see him if he if he doesn't. <laughs> no problem. Are you still you still hear me, Charlie? Or? Uh, yeah, I think everyone's okay, good. Perfect. Yeah, I think everyone's good. Okay. So, um, how do you want to do this, Charlie? We can take a look at. Uh, unfortunately, on the on the the car here on the, my sixty eight Z, you're not going to be able to see underneath on the transmission numbers, the location, the casting numbers. Uh, so maybe we can use the, the, the car I'm building right now uh, in order to show just certain, certain areas. And then like, if anybody has any questions or, uh, like, uh, or concerns or maybe need a little bit more information on a particular car they're looking at or where do you find this number or what does it mean, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions as well. But, you know, Charlie, I think we're capable of uh, looking at some of the numbers just – just so get people an indication where everything is. Well, yeah, we can we can have a go at that, but we'll, uh, I'm not sure how portable it's going to be. But right. um, so we can lift the camera and let's let's just. I'm going to go off to a little bit. Yeah. Uh, as I said to you, this is all new. Uh, we've not done this type of exploratory work before, and. Uh, Hopefully it's going to. So on on these uh, on these castings, Charlie, depending on uh, on the model, uh, this is the number of the case, the three nine two five six six zero, are specific to certain models. Uh, this is an actual Muncie transmission. This particular Muncie is a, an M twenty one, which is the uh, the close ratio um, middle of the line tranny for the for the General Motors. They came with an M twenty. Uh, an M21 and M22, which is the rock pressure, which was the heavy duty transmission. So uh, when you're looking at a trans, this is this the, the, the cast, the, 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 the case number on the side here, further down, Charlie, you'll see the actual VIN number of the, of the, the, uh, the, the vehicle stamped in here. Yeah. There's a P uh, with a, with a, a date code here over here is a B that B it means that this is an M21. If it was an M20 transmission, which is the wide ratio transmission, uh, with the, the gear ratios a little bit different on it, that would be an A. So if it's an A, it's an M20. If it's a B, it's an M21. And if it's a C, it's the all uh, the all covenant uh, M22 that everybody looks for. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, are you reading this from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom? From the bottom to the top. Okay, so... To make sure that you're getting an authentic piece, make sure that that stamp is from the bottom up to the top. Correct. And this also, you can also see the build date in here, mm -hmm. which which you can break it down for um, uh, to, to to see if it actually matches the build date of the car, which this one does. And what what's this? This is this is a this is a the fill plug. Yeah. On the M21s and the M20 and the M20s, it only came with a fill plug. Hmm. So uh, the M22s, if you notice here, there is a there's a block here. Usually the M22s came with a, a dream plug as well, and it had a there's a, a stamping on a W stamping on it. Okay. Uh, on the original ones, but uh, on the M21s and the M20s, they only had a fill plug. And how do you drain it? Uh, you suck it out. Okay. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Right. That's right. So uh, that's the that's the fill plug. Over here is the tailstock number. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can see that, Charlie. It's kind of no, hard just, to see. So you can see the tailstock number, which is specific to certain models. Again, they vary from model to model. So uh, that's a, that's another thing we can talk about after what what tailstock, what uh, case number belongs to to what vehicle and what year. Mm -hmm. This is the actual speedo, the mm -hmm. speedo mechanism. There is a gear that goes inside here. They're color coded based on uh, on the differential. That you have in order for for the, the speedo to match up properly and and and, and portray the, the the right mileage. Right? No, I I heard an old trick uh, that some guys with some cars would disconnect that. Mm -hmm. 
so that it wouldn't record the mileage. Yeah, back in the day you could do that. Yeah, hundred percent. And but uh, try doing that nowadays. It's, mm -hmm. The mileage is stored, stored in every controlling on the car. Mm -hmm. So this this particular junction block here, this is a uh, the transducer. Not all cars come with this piece here. This is specific to cars with came with a, a 410, 410 or 411 differential, the gear ratio. So what it does is it was an, uh, an adapter that was put in here along with the speedo gear to make to ensure that the gear ratio in the back with the 410 was uh, was uh, was accurate. And these are they're very rare. You can, they're hard to find. If you find one on your car, it's 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 amazing. And, and so if you if you get a car that doesn't have one, what do you do? Well, you got to try and find one, and good luck with that. There, there's specific numbers that are stamped on them that tell you uh, what this one here is. Uh, it's on the other side, and you can mm -hmm. also see it there. Yeah. Uh, on this side here, Charlie, there's the actual case number. This is the uh, the the side cover. There's a there's a number on this one here that's specific uh, to different models as well. Yeah. So this there's a number here that's the case number. Mm hmm. And these are all the original the original shift linkages on the transmission. They're also stamped with uh, with different part numbers in order to identify if they're original. And so, if you if you don't have them on the car that you're rebuilding, you just go into the catalog at GM. How does it work? I, I don't even think they're. I'm not even think these are available still. So what you do is you find uh, uh, people that have them that you know they have uh, nos or they have uh, old ones or that they had on the shelves for many years or but uh, a lot of these things are changed with the her shifter this is the original her shifter that came with the the 69 uh there's a specific date that's stamped on there too as well but these things here um they can be replaced hearst makes a uh shifter linkage and and, and box there that uh, that fits identical and it's, it's a little bit more uh efficient too as well so that's a, a, a pretty robust uh, mechanism for the shifter. Correct. Um, yeah, it's not going to come away in your hand very easily. No, it's pretty pretty clunky. Um, so that's a little bit about the transmission. If you want any, anybody that has any information regarding how to, 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 to break down the dates on there, I can do an episode on that too as well. But on the, uh, on the engine, this is a 396L78. So this car here is the... Uh, uh, the high horse, other than the 427, this is the next one down from that motor. It was specific to uh, uh, the 375 horse, uh, 396 displacement. So that's the casting number that's specific to, the, to, the, to this particular uh, setup. The build date of the, the casting date of the actual uh, engine, and it's on the side of the block, Charlie, but I don't think you'll be able to see it with the, with the headers and everything, right? And, and what's this number here? Uh, that's just a cast number. That's oh, some, okay. A, 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 yeah. General yeah. Motors one. See here it says GM six on it. That's the yeah. other one that GM put in there. So that's the block, the casting. When you come up here, uh, that's the intake number. Yep. So the intake number is the one six three, which was specific to rectangular port uh, cylinder head. So it was a big chambered cylinder head, right? So that one there is for the uh, L seventy eights. Used to use them, and and uh, it was more. Of a, of a high, more high rise intake and a little bit more performance oriented. Uh, on the back here, we'll look at a little bit of the distributor. The distributor numbers are stamped back here, Charlie. You can see here, it's got yeah. the actual date on it. So this one here was a, uh, let me see if I can see that. It's hard to see without the light. Mm -hmm. It's the 499, which is original. Yeah, yeah I see that. And this is a eight, uh, looks like a, can't eat, I can't see the number. Yeah, yeah I can't see either. It's hard to see without the light, but that's where the number is located for that. On the front here, Charlie, as well, if you're looking at carburetors, right? Just give me a second here. Yeah. As I said to you, I should really have a cameraman. But you know what? This is a, a good test. See how it goes, Charlie. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. on here, when you're looking at uh, the carburetor number ID, it's in, it's in the top right corner. And it, it tells you the different numbers. This is the, the, the 4643, which is specific for, for the L78. This is a, um, a 780 uh, vacuum secondary carburetor, which was specific for, uh, for, the, for this engine. Uh, now, I hope somebody like uh, Kristen, if she's still got time and looking, can let us know that uh, she can still hear us uh, because they're a little bit remote from the microphone at this point. And maybe, maybe for future reference, 
uh, we might get portable mics that, you know, right, lavalier well, type thing. Right. Yeah, we'll look into that. So here's another thing too, Charlie. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just going to pull the alternator forward. Yeah, and it's hidden. The number's hidden under the cover right, here. So I'll just take the bolt out here and I'll just pull it back so people can see. Yep. So if you come here, you can see the actual number here. This, oh, is, yeah. an eight, this is an 837 alternator. It has the build date there too as well. Yeah. And it's a, it's a 12 amp with a 37 amp alternator. Oh. These are specific, and these are, uh, I think they're on the uh, 69 uh, Z28s have it, 69 L78s. Uh, the Chevelles, I think, use 837 is too. The only mm. thing that changes is the build date of it. And uh, this is a, an aluminum aluminum casting? or Yeah, yeah. aluminum casting. Yeah. There's a CZ, which was a stamping that was yeah, on the laundry. That. Yeah. Uh, the other thing too, Charlie, is these ones here. They came with a, they came with the deep groove pulley. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember. Remember you I was talking about that. that? Yeah. So the deep groove pulley on on the on the high yeah. horse engines. So it had one on the alternator, the deep groove on the water pump, and on the bottom crank yeah. pulley. Certainly too. isn't going to come out. No. So what they did is for for higher revving engines, more performance oriented vehicles, they uh, they did the deep groove pulley so that way the uh, the belt doesn't fly off right mm -hmm. at higher RPM. Uh, the casting number on the block. I think we talked. We talked about that, Charlie, before. Like, uh, yeah, we thing? did. But this is—you can probably see a little bit better here. If we're making it dizzy out there, don't worry about that. The gravel, the the, uh, the the drug stores have gravel. Yeah. Or bring your own next week. Yeah, we'll, there's a nice close-up. Yeah, let me just see. So right there, you can see it, Charlie. On that, this is what they call the the the, the block pad. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can see there's a number on there. So it gives you the VIN number of the car, and it gives you the the build date, and the JH, which means it's an L78 car, four speed. Well, I'll tell you, Peter, uh, I haven't seen any of you out there in YouTube land uh, providing this type of data. Yeah, and like I said, we, it's not like it's not like we're trying to outdo anybody. It's just no. a matter of pro providing the information. Yeah, exactly. Needed, right? As I said, it's a cornucopia of information, right. and that's just uh, an example of uh, the depth of knowledge that you have about the about the car. And, and uh, there, there's like I said, like step by step, you can actually analyze it. Um, you know, part by part, number by number. And it's it's uh, the information is all available in the cylinder heads underneath here. The casting dates of the cylinder head are inside here too, mm -hmm. so you can verify uh, you can verify the casting numbers for the cylinder head. Make sure that they match what the actual block does too. And right? are these stainless steel or chrome plated? These are chrome. Yeah, yeah, they're chrome. And they're specific. You can see that that these have the drip rails inside so you can yeah. tell because they have the, the, the spot Dimples. welds yeah so they're not yeah. perfect they're not supposed to be completely straight and flat yeah usually the ones with the, the correct ones have the actual uh mm. the little uh, welds in it mm -hmm. uh, just one thing on the show charlie yeah on the intake we're known as the winters the winters intake which was the uh the manufacturer of the uh, for GM. Yeah, you'll notice there's a snowflake right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so that's a Winters intake. Well, so that's their logo. That's their logo. Oh, is that right? So you can identify the the, the correct GM intake from. Uh, and so, what do they do these days? Still do the same thing? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they reproduce the intakes, but I don't think they reproduce it with the with the uh, mm -hmm. with the Winters intake the logo on it. And this firing order here. Yeah, that's yep. the firing order yep. for the engine. So it's one eight four three six five seven two. Yeah, that's the firing order for your GM uh, V8s. Wow. So, like when we build, when I build these things, Charlie, uh, like depending on on what I'm doing with it, I usually go back to uh, try and get as much as much information, as much detail, and when I'm putting them back together, as as the way they came from the factory. Again, I'm more of a the first generation Camaro guy. I like to see cars. The way they came from the factory, and I try to restore them uh, to the best of my ability and uh, and the best of my knowledge to, to try and get it back the way they, they, they came from the factory. Well, Peter, that was great. Uh, I would never have known where to look on an engine or transmission, and I wouldn't even know what to look for. Uh, so, uh, as I said, it's a wealth of, of information. Thanks very much for that. That's that's tremendous. So um, 
you were talking about numbers matching. Mm -hmm. So give us a, an example of how you would do numbers matching with a found piece like that. So what you do is, obviously, you look at the build date of the car from the trim tag that we talked about, right? Yeah. So from the build date of the car or any documentation, that you have, remember we talked about a protective plate. We talked about a uh, build sheet. We talked about the uh, original bill of sale. Anything that, that will give you an indication of when the car was built, you're going you're gonna to base your analysis on the powertrain based on what the car build date of, of, of the, the build date of the car is. So normally between the engine, they're usually, uh, they could be anywhere a week, two weeks uh, prior to the, to, the, to the build, sometimes up to a month. Depending, there's there's scenarios that come through that yep. that could happen, right? You're on the assembly line, they have yeah, they're sitting over through, there, sitting over there. It yeah. might be a week before, a week later, but norm typically your your build date of your engine is always before the actual build date of the car. Mm. And uh, for people's information, uh, all you have to do is go back to last week's podcast, and you'll get all that information mm -hmm. that that. That you showed to us. Yeah. And so, like I said, if, if anybody has questions, Charlie, we can always go back and, and say, listen, I missed the, this piece here, or I got a trim tag. What's what's this number here mean? That's that's what it, that's what we're gonna do. Like I'd like to do too as well, like the the, 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 the Q and A type uh, sessions. Yeah. Uh, where we can provide that kind of information. Well, yeah. It, talking about Q and A, um, I'm, I'm still kind of dumbfounded by this because the oh. Hi, there's two people there now. Welcome. I uh, hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, if you missed anything, send us a note and we'll we'll reiterate what we want, what we've already conveyed. Not a problem. Any questions are welcome. Uh, and I was just going to say that. Okay, so there there are two people viewing right now. But as soon as this is over and I go to YouTube, I told you this before. There's many more people have watched it on YouTube. And uh, how this software, StreamYard, and I'm giving StreamYard a, a plug for this, uh, they provide the service, uh, they facilitate uh, our production, and, and they provide tools uh, like the ticker tape message and, and the banner and, and the brand, that kind of stuff. And then they, in, in the cloud, they push it out to YouTube. That's how it works. So um, I, I'm just wondering uh, how we make a connection with the people that might be watching on YouTube, or maybe the uh, for whatever reason they're they're doing it an anonymously, which often happens. But well, we're back to one, but that's okay. Um, yeah, there's somebody out there interested because, uh, as I said to you, I, I checked yesterday or this morning and there were 86 views on last week's uh, now that's pretty good and and it's been steady because the week before i think it was over 100 i can't remember exactly but there's obviously interested parties out there um and but it'd be nice to hear from them just in a note to say hi how are you I'm so and so. I love the car. You know, I wish I had one. I'm going to buy one. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. And that's that's exactly it. So if, if, if anybody has any questions, Charlie, they can always they can always shoot us a, a, a message or post something on on our YouTube even after the fact. Yeah, when absolutely. We, when we go back and look at it, say, oh, we forgot this. You know, maybe we'll touch on it. We had a, a viewer that talked about it last week. Yep. They asked this question here. I did a little bit of research for you. This is what I have, right? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, um, you know, so it, just a, a reminder, uh, subscribe. It, that would be a big thing. Subscribe, follow, give us a thumbs up. Tell all your friends that are petrol heads. Um, pass the word around that Charlie and Peter are here and, and we are producing this show for your information and uh, an enlightenment uh, and we look forward to seeing you here on a regular basis and as Peter said, don't hesitate like get on board jump in the car 
talk to us, give us a question that we can help you with. And if we don't have the answer, we'll certainly get you the answer. Because Peter knows some people who know some people, if you know what yeah. I mean. And the other two, Charlie, like I know today was more just superficial stuff. Like just to give you an idea where things are. And uh, but you know, like I said, if people want to go more in depth, I can go as 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 dates and breakdowns. But I can tell you straight out when you're looking at a car and you're looking for that diamond in the rough and numbers matching, there's numbers and dates on every component. Rims have tires, like there's a decode on the rims. There's a decode on alternators, starters, distributors, carburetors, uh, even specific bolts, markings on the bolts that, that were in a certain area. It's, it, just, it just goes on and on and on. And it's, it's, it's a lot of information. Sometimes it's overwhelming. And you know what? At the end of the day, sometimes you find a vehicle that doesn't have this part or it's missing this or it's missing that. With a little bit of research and, 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 uh, and, and you know, put some time in, a lot of times you can find parts that are out there, like new old stock or somebody's had an old one, you get it rebuilt or you rebuild it, put it back on the car. You know, it, it's out there. So yeah, don't yeah. get discouraged. You can't just discourage if, if, uh, if a car is missing the original intake or it's missing a starter. You got to understand, these cars are, are over 50 years old, Charlie. So think about your own personal car right now. How many times did I go into a, into a shop and get parts changed on it with aftermarket parts? You know, yeah. it's not, it doesn't have the original oil. It doesn't have the original wiper motor. It doesn't have the... Yeah, and you never know. I think about it over 50 years. How many times that car is not in the shop where people have repaired it, right? Yeah. So don't get discouraged if you don't find what it is and you don't find the, 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 the parts on it. Let's put it this way. If it's missing stuff, these cars were raced every day. From the minute they came off the, uh, the assembly line and purchased by a customer, the first thing they did, they went to the track and enjoyed them, right? Yeah. So things would blow up. But just because you're missing the original tranny on the car, it doesn't mean that you crush and scrap original vintage cars, right? You don't. You just yeah. you, you resurrect them to the best of your ability. Yeah. Now, here's a question for you. Um, you know, the smart person that's interested would have all this on their iPhone or alternative cell phone. Uh, and they're going out there looking for a car. And they've got all the all the information, all the numbers, all the tags, all the data. It's all there. What kind of car should they not take on as a project? Tough uh, question, I know, but it's a tough question because you know, I mean, if it's if it, if the documentation is there and it's an original car, like it could be original Super Sport, original uh, Z twenty eight. Original rally sport with an SS package. When you when you get into those cars, like I said again, Charlie, don't be discouraged with with if there's <clears throat> stuff that's missing on the car. Even though it's missing the original engine, fine. It's a big it's a big part of the of the of the car. But you know, and that obviously might devalue the car a little bit. But when you put that car back to where it was and to the best of your ability, it's it's still what it, it's it, it's still the same car. Unfortunately, the guy that was going down the track at 8,000 RPM blew the motor. Three weeks after he bought it, there was warranty. They replaced it again. That's another good thing is when you're looking at the blocks and, and you're looking for date codes and correct VIN numbers, General Motors should have a CE block. CE block was a warranty exchange block. So let's just say you bought a brand new car, Charlie. You go to the track and you, and you, and you blow it up. Uh, General Motors would, would uh, replace the engine under warranty or the short block, whatever whatever was damaged, but you would lose the number on the pad there that we talked about. Rather than having the VIN number and the prefix for what that car was originally, now it comes with a CE stamping, mm -hmm. which is a warranty exchange block, or and, and, and it doesn't have the VIN number no longer on it. But just because it has a CE block, and if it's the date code on the, on the casting is, is relevant and makes sense to when that block was replaced, yeah, the car still is still we're still an original car. Mm -hmm. It just it just it had a warranty replacement block. Well, I I wonder how many manufacturers would have stood by that type of warranty. Yeah, well, I'm sure there was uh, there was uh, situations where they yeah no you're not getting it covered. So yeah, and what about aftermarket parts? 
Um, you know, like the reproduction parts are good. You know, obviously the, the original stuff is better, but you know what, like I said in one of the previous uh, episodes, uh, some things are no longer available. You can't get it and you have to restore that car. You need it to get back to where, and they reproduce it very close to what the original one was. So yeah, you, you have to do it. You have to put it in, you buy it and it is what it is. And how do you find the right guy? To buy from yeah and, and uh, obviously when you're buying depending on what you're buying if you're driving a private guy or you're driving from a, a retailer you always want to know their their um uh, their qualifications obviously you, you've done the research on what you're looking to, to purchase and you obviously know the deco that you want to purchase so you know, i mean it's just it's it's you're, you're putting the trust in somebody else but you also have to do the homework yourself to know that what you're looking for is is what you're looking for Wow. So there again, that's uh, another evening of uh, quantifiable data uh, for the enthusiast uh, and Camaro admirer uh, to use in their effort and search for a, for a car. So uh, what can we look forward to, to next week, Peter? Um, you know what, Johnny, I think, you know, we... We can talk a little bit about, like I did with the with the uh, the trim tags. We can look at the different codes and how to break down the dates on the casting numbers. That kind of tells you because every every uh, every num number every um, uh, letter signifies what month, what date, what week was built, right? So if people are interested, it's like, and I know sometimes it gets a little bit, you know boring maybe hopefully not but you know these things here are all very good information that i've researched over the years and it helped me a lot and anything that i can provide and if like i said again like charlie says if anybody has questions we can do an episode just on q a right yeah exactly um and we'd like people to participate um all the enthusiasts car lovers petrol heads whoever you are um Drop us a note, you know, send us a, an email. You can get our email uh, through YouTube and uh, pose your questions and or suggestions or sh send us photographs of your car. I'd be very interested in seeing that type of stuff. Anything that uh, anything that will help anybody, Charlie. And you know, we're here to help two old guys trying to, to have some fun and, and hopefully help people out there too as well. Yeah, so we're just going to have uh, another little look here at the car. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Shiny. Yeah, I was going to take it out for a drive today, Well, it was kind of threatening rain yeah, all day. Yeah, the weather hasn't been the greatest. So. But this coming week, it's uh, supposed to be pretty good. So, and, and not as humid. Uh, as it's been the last couple of days. Yeah, and, and hopefully in the months to come, if we're still uh, on board with this, Charlie, and we see that we're getting good feedback and, 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 and we're still having fun with it, I can I can only imagine what it's going to be like when I get my gold car back and we start putting it back together, right? Yeah, and, you know, I uh, hate to regurgitate, but... You know, we, we put a little bit of effort into this uh, and because we like doing it. And secondly, uh, we're hoping that it's going to be useful information for uh, some people out there. But encouragement uh, and reinforcement goes a long way. And it doesn't take much uh, to encourage a guy like me who just loves to be in front of the camera and chatting. And Peter's getting there too. Um, so, you know, a little note, hey, cheers, Charlie, appreciated that. Thanks, Peter. You know, that was a great show. Doesn't take much. And, uh, you know, so just reach out uh, and say hi. You know, I'm so-and-so, love the show, looking forward to the, oh, what about this or can you do that? Yeah, by all means, get in touch. And like I said, if there's, if you have a question or you want something, 
we don't know everything. Charlie and I don't know everything. Like as, as much as I've, I've been doing these cards all my life, I'm always learning every card that I do. There's yeah, but stuff. Peter, Peter knows everything. I'm just here asking the questions. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was awesome, Charlie. I just wind them up and, and let them go. Right? So anyway, um, yeah, so I think we've come to the end of the uh, blog, the podcast for this evening. And, you know, I, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the transmission and, and the engine block and uh, the associated equipment there. And, you know, something to look forward to is that car coming together in the coming months and uh, the other car coming back here and probably most likely going for a ride in the car. I think that's a... What do you think about that? Maybe we'll do one episode, a little bit of a ride and drive with this one here. Is it possible, Charlie? Um, uh, I'll need to look into it because, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, etc. I'll work something out. Either um, I come up here the night before or something like that. Record it? Record it uh, and then edit it so that I can post it and that will become... Uh, the main element of the of the following show, but yeah, we'll work something out. Uh, Here's a project for technical. Yeah, we're always looking for something new, and I'm always after the people at Streamyard uh, asking them questions: how to do this, can you improve that, that type of stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll certainly ask them uh, about that. Anyway, um, uh, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, that took the time to drop into YouTube and I expect to go home and see thousands of people have signed up and 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 even many more sponsors okay. uh, and I'm, I'm sure the the sponsors are banging at the door uh, offering us stuff and uh, uh, we're looking forward to going through the uh, the offers uh, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can on that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this has been fun again, Peter, and loads of information, and the car looks tremendous. And, uh, yeah, thanks for hosting this here. And, you know, thanks to uh, Vine Street Studios, without whom this would not be possible. Trust me. So, Peter, close us out. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, great job again, Charlie. Always a pleasure working with you. Uh, and like I said, if, uh, if people get a little bit dancey, uh, I can also cook too, so maybe we can do a show on cooking, Charlie. Yeah, that's right, you can, yeah. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Great job, Charlie, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, and once again, <laughs> thank you, everybody who's dropped by. And it's goodbye from me, Charlie, and goodbye from him, Peter. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And we'll maybe just try and... Um, uh, Yeah, and hopefully they'll be able to hear this. Uh... So that's what you got to look forward to in the, in the coming weeks. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much again. Don't forget to subscribe, like, thumbs up, all that jazz. And uh, good night once again from Charlie and Peter. Thanks very much for coming well, by. Uh, uh, West Coast well, Customs, Customs up there. Good night, everybody. Uh, I know you've, uh, been, I know there you've been there a couple of times. Quite the place, Quite the place isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah.